Hello guys, welcome back to Spiritual Essence. In today's topic, we are going to be discussing basically a reiteration of a topic that I've already discussed. Now, you if you are a regular to this channel, you may remember that in the episode Words of Power, Creating Words of Power, I taught you how to properly energize words into becoming uh, magical words so that you can use them in prayer, in spells, what have you. Well, we're going to do a reiteration on this, but this time with the complete focus on spells and incantations, creating them, what you need to do. And it is, it's a really fun process, but it also requires uh, a balance of emotions, focus, and um, attention to detail when writing. And I'm going to go through all that one by one. So, to start, as I discussed in Creating Words of Power, energizing words has everything to do with your intent, your emotions that you are feeling at the time you write these words. Whenever you write a note to someone, you are feeling emotions at that time. Uh, you have to focus on what emotions you are putting forth. You don't want to write words that are supposed to be for happiness and peace while in your heart having rage and stress and sadness and other dark emotions like that uh, corrupt your energy. That wouldn't be so good. Uh, when practitioners create spells, they try to get their minds right. They try to be in a position of power. How do we achieve such things? Well, there's a lot of things you can do. So if you uh, just came home from work and you all of a sudden get some inspiration to write an incantation, well, uh, obviously you might be feeling dirty from work, so obviously you would want to take a bath or a shower, you know. Uh, baths are more for relaxation, so if you find yourself feeling a bit more stressed, a bath would be a way to go. Uh, and just relax for a minute. Um, take a little nap first, you know, to kind of refresh yourself. Just rest your eyes. Meditate. Meditation gets your energy and your emotions and your mind in perfect sync. Um, possibly, uh, the goal for meditation is 30 minutes or more. So it, the minimum is 30 minutes a day. Just to get your mind right. Next uh, thing you could do is, uh, you see, for when you're working on spells, say you're like working on a spell or doing a ritual and you wanted, you know, a snack before you participated. You obviously don't want something that's going to make you feel, uh, make your stomach upset. So obviously you wouldn't want... Um, fast food, you don't want anything deep fried, you don't want uh, anything like cheese or dairy that's going to make you gassy, you don't want anything like that. So um, fruits, a little fruit salad is fine, you know, a salad, a regular salad is fine, um, some uh, cut up vegetables, if you want dip, okay, you know, just something light, maybe even a little soup. Something like that. Uh, but keep in mind that when you eat vegetables and fruits, they do energize your chakras as well as help your body feel good because they're full of vitamins and minerals and all kinds of good things. So it's always good to do that. Um, another thing... All right, all right. So oftentimes, you know, when my... Face is feeling like greasy and all. Sometimes I like to, you know, wash my face and put uh, like a charcoal face mask on. Kind of have like a, a miniature little spa day. Uh, relax with a foot bath, you know, things like that. Uh, those are just some of the many things you could do to just relax a little. I remember when I was about to create a spell, it was a justice spell because I had been wronged at work and uh, accused of something that I didn't do. 
I was so mad, but I knew that I had to contain my anger in order for me to have the, you know, to do the spell right. So, <laughs> I actually got drunk. Well, not so much drunk as tipsy. I had like six glasses of wine and I chugged them. And then after that, I struggled <laughs> to take a shower while I was the room was spinning. And uh, I watched a little TV until I sobered up a little bit. So when I was just sobering up, I got everything ready to perform the spell. Um, I wouldn't suggest getting drunk or drinking, you know, for that. But, you know, having a little glass of wine, I guess, or a beer or I don't know, whatever you like to drink. I guess that wouldn't be so bad either. Uh, you know, just any one of those things just to relax yourself and to reset your emotions. Forget about what happened today. Even if something really frustrated you and it, that frustration has followed you home, you must relax yourself. Reset yourself. Another thing that I like to try whenever I have uh, negative emotions and I want to get rid of them for a spell, I perform uh, an energy ball. You can do this or this. You know, I like to do this. So you make the energy ball, and I've taught you guys how to do this, how to make a psi ball or a chi ball. And you're going to uh, remember and feel in your heart everything that frustrates you right now, all the stress, anything that makes you angry or nervous or anxious, and that energy is going to flow through the energy that's going through your arms and into the chi ball. It's all just going to bubble up in the chi ball, and it's going to stay in the chi ball. You may feel the chi ball being more dense, but as it continues to fill up with negative energy, you are going to use your intent to kind of compress it a bit. Compress it. And once you feel your body has been cleaned out of all those negative emotions, you're going to take it and throw it down into the earth where it's going to remain deep down inside and you're going to use your mind's intent seeing it go all the way down to the earth's core where there's enough energy for uh all the negativity of the chi ball to be disrupted and reset that is a great way that i start off many rituals including astral uh travels only i do it spiritually so <clears throat> once you've done that grab a piece of paper and a pen or a pencil all right once you got a writing utensil and a piece of paper before you begin writing think very carefully on the spell you wish to create Try to think of needs, uh, an as-needed basis. <clears throat> I mean, wants are all, you know, well and good, but if it's something you really feel you need, that will resonate in your heart a little more. Because obviously, needs far outweigh wants, don't they? So say uh, you're running behind on getting a bill paid this month and you really are hoping that the hours at work will be enough to cover it or you may want to you know it may be enough to cover it but you also want some left over you know something of that nature so obviously a monetary spell you want something for prosperity and financial gain because you need it in order to pay off your house well, <clears throat> okay, now that you've got the topic in mind, which is prosperity, we will begin writing. So what kind of things do you think we could write on a money spell? It doesn't have to rhyme, although it is kind of whimsical and fun if it is, but um, most of the time my, my spells or prayers, they don't always rhyme. Some do, some don't. It really is up to you, but it really does not matter. Now, the spell can be as long or as short as you want. However, uh, if you are inclined to write a short spell, 
try to make it as detailed as possible. Fit as many details as you can into one short sentence or paragraph. Uh, as a kind of incentive basis, imagine you were being charged per word, like on a newspaper ad. So try to think what words would work the most. What words would resonate with you the best? What words represent your situation more? <clears throat> uh, for example, so you are needing of money. Well, okay, first before you say that, are you using your own energy? Are you calling to a spirit? Maybe uh, a deceased relative who was very prosperous in their lifetime that you know is still watching over you? <clears throat> Are you going to an elemental spirit, which is good for personal growth uh, and prosperity? Are you contacting a higher power or a deity? Because <clears throat> some people, surprisingly, they are spiritual, but they don't always have either they don't have a belief in a god or they don't utilize deities. I know there are some people like that. I've met quite a few. Uh, they rely on the energy of the universe alone or themselves and their own energy, which is fine. For example... Uh, the goddess Rhiannon, she is a Welsh goddess. She is a high queen. She is called upon as a goddess of sovereignty. She is a goddess of politics. She is said to be a very generous queen. She's very rich, and she doesn't mind sharing it with those in need. So I would call upon her power. So I'm like, I call to the goddess Rhiannon. Hear me now at this time as I need you. So you're calling to the goddess, okay? You're getting her attention. Okay, now what is the message you want to say? Uh, fill my pockets and or bank account with prosperity and wealth as needed. Grant me some of your wealth as I need it to make a payment. Um, but if you were to use this spell at just in general, you wouldn't just put, oh, because I need a payment. You would put something like, please share your wealth with me. Uh, I'm in desperate need at this time. Grant me prosperity by the power of three. Thank you so much. So mote it be. See? We use a bit of rhyme in there. And all of a sudden we have a prosperity spell to the goddess Rhiannon. And it's short. It gets to the point. It's detailed, yet short. And it rhymes a bit, which makes it easier to remember a little bit. You know, it rhymes a little. Now, from what I've learned in my spiritual books, because I, I tell people right off the bat, I am not a master of magic. I am not a super expert. I am not the um, Albert Einstein of spirituality. I am learning, too. And my goal is to learn along with you and share what I've learned through research and practice and study along to you. But it has been in uh, my research and study through the books that I have read that saying a prayer or saying a spell over and over again is very, very good. Um, at m uh, minimum, three times, because three is a magic number. Three is represented in many spiritual forms as a very powerful number. Uh, karmic justice and karmic power is said to come back to a person times three. Uh, the goddess Hecate, she is seen as a triple goddess. She is triple powered, which includes strength, magical strength, 
and magical intuition and knowledge. It represents quite a bit in magic and spiritualism. Now, the uh, according to uh, the Druids, anything uh, that is a product of three, so three, six, nine, twelve, you know, uh, any number that makes up of three can be used. Now, I I find it hard to, uh, unless I was desperate, saying a spell 27 times. Oh, uh, I don't think so. Or saying it 12 times. I would say it for however long I need to until I feel that energy resonate. You will feel an energy shift around you. That is how you know. That is how you know that it starts to work. Saying it over and over again really rings in the ears of the gods and will allow them to hear you. And along with your own intent, your own emotion, obviously you would feel the need, you know, I really need this, please help me, you know, uh, please use your generous wealth on me. I really need it for uh, my payments or else I'm going to be late and I'm going to lose my house. You know, I really need your help. You know, have that feeling in your heart to let them know because the gods, they not only speak through words, they speak through emotions and feelings because they are charged emotions. They are charged thought forms. Um, now, this may seem a bit simple, and it may sound like I'm just redoing a video and just saying a few different things, but I really wanted to uh, have a reiteration from what I found uh, while studying uh, magic. And it turns out, you know, the more you say it, the more it resonates with higher powers. So you really, when doing this, you want to put a lot of thought. You want to put a lot of effort into it. A lot of emotion, but the right emotions. That is why you must cleanse yourself. Uh, if you're doing it right after, you know, let's say going to work or maybe in a stressful situation with family, something like that. You want to cleanse yourself before you begin those things. Whether it's prayer, whether it's a ritual, or whether it's an incantation, or all three. You must get your mind and your emotions in order. Check yourself before you wreck yourself in magic, kind of. You know, and uh, keep in mind that anything you send out, uh, according to uh, many spiritual paths, anything you send out will come back to you. And sometimes it'll come back to you quicker than you think, and you want to make sure you're sending out the right emotions. And especially... Uh, if you were to say this to a god and not have the right intentions that you were trying to purvey, if I were that god, I'd be like, okay, he's sending mixed signals. I don't really know what he's saying. You know, his words say one thing, but the emotions, the signal I'm getting says another, but the signal is stronger, so I think I'm going to do this instead. Okay, so you may be trying to help yourself financially, but, you know, you're focusing on something that happened at work. So you're basically sending this negative energy to this deity. And they're going to say, okay, let me send it back to you. Here you go. Exactly what you wanted. You know, and that's not what you want. Uh, it's basically like sending a signal to a satellite. The satellite, you know, representing the gods that are... Um, they're obviously in a higher plane than us. They are not here with us. You're sending the signal to them. If you send the wrong signal, wires are going to get crossed somewhere and it's going to be the wrong signal you're sending that's going to be sending back from the satellite. So be very mindful when you create spells. So to summarize, it doesn't have to rhyme. Just get to the point. Say it as many times as you feel need be, because the more you say it, the more it'll resonate with the God. And if it resonates with you too, and you feel the vibrational energy coming along, that means it's working. Uh, get your mind right, get your emotions in order, 
so that you don't send the wrong signal out and get the wrong signal back. And then you may draw symbols uh, that have to do with that certain prayer. You might draw like dollar signs you might, uh, uh, maybe runes or symbols that have to do with prosperity and financial gain. You can do that too to increase them. And you may even call them by name after you say it, say the incantation many times. That's really up to you. Now, some people like to take uh, the spell they've written down. <clears throat> they will fold it as many times as they can. And they'll fold it up real, real small. And each time they fold it, they will turn it counterclockwise. And each time they do that, it's kind of a releasing of negative energy. So if you want to get rid of an energy, you would fold it counterclockwise. If you wanted to have something come to you, you would do clockwise. So in this case, you want obviously uh, financial gain to come to you. So obviously you're going to do it in a clockwise pattern. But counterclockwise means to take out. Clockwise means to take in. And they will burn it in a ritual or on their altar and maybe do a prayer afterwards to send it out to the gods because it has your energy already in it. It's just going up to the gods. It has now become smoke and pure energy, and it's going to be lifted up to those uh, higher planes now that the normal physical piece of paper couldn't get to. That is another way to get your signal right. All right, guys, that is pretty much it for how to create a proper incantation and or words power. Thank you for joining me. Uh, please, if you have any comments, questions, or concerns, put it down in the comment section down below. Please subscribe to my channel and hit the bell button so that you don't miss any future videos. All right, everyone. Safe blessings and safe spell casting.